return from an absolutely glorious photo walk weekend in the Lake District. I was working with a group of people to help them to gain confidence in their photography and to improve their camera skills. I thought I'd take this opportunity to share with you some of the amazing locations we visited, share some of the photographs that I made over the weekend and go through the main topic that we covered, which was decision making in photography. Our weekend began at the beautiful coastal village of St Bees. It was an absolutely stunning evening when we got there. The sun was in the sky and it was glinting off the sea and creating beautiful golden hour light on the houses and buildings along the seafront. Unfortunately for us, it just dipped behind a bank of cloud before we had the chance to photograph a glorious sunset to top off the first day of the weekend. But Having said that, we still got some great photographs on the beach with the groins heading out into the sea and, as I say, some of the buildings around as well. I actually managed to stay back a few hours after dark as well where I captured some slow shutter speed shots of the sea crashing in and the moon glinting on the sea from the cliff tops above. It was at St Bees where I introduced the topic for the weekend which was decision making. Now when we go out to take photographs we don't often think about the decisions that we're making to create the photographs that we make. And I outlined over the weekend that sometimes in order to improve our photography skills we have to bring these decisions that we're making to the conscious mind. Because not only will it help us to gravitate to why we're taking the photograph in the first place, it will also give the photograph a bit more meaning if people ask us, well, why did you do that or why did you do this? We will have an answer if we made those decisions at the time. I decided to split our decision-making process into three different sections. The first is why. Why do we pick up the camera and make the photograph that we want to make in the first place? And then the second two brackets are camera settings, what camera settings will help us to achieve that why, and composition, how am I going to formulate the frame of this photograph and the content of the photograph to once again get back to that why. So that's the seed that I planted at St Bees and over the next couple of days I would bring to life some of these decisions and help my participants to bring those decisions to mind and make more clear and conscious decisions about the photographs that they were making.
full day in the Lake District, we started off by heading towards Ramadale, which at the time of year that we visited is famous for bluebells. Now usually you would find bluebells in a wooded setting, but in Ranadale they're plastered over the fell sites and they create fantastic channeling views down towards Crunk Water in the valley below. Now it was a Saturday with glorious weather when we decided to visit Ranadale, which also meant that many other people had had the same idea as us to go and photograph and enjoy the bluebells, which made it really frustrating trying to get those brilliant angles without hordes of people walking through your photographs. Now don't get me wrong, people can sometimes really work in a photograph to provide context or maybe even a sense of scale, but in a beautiful landscape like Ranadale, sometimes all you want is a beautiful bit of peace and quiet to get those unique pictures. It was quite difficult and we did think at points it might have been better to go on a dull day where you had still the bluebells in all their glory, but maybe a few less people. But we persevered anyway, and as I say, I'll share some of my photographs with you from Ranadale in a moment. It was also here where I went into this idea of decision making in a bit more detail. And we started off by discussing the why of photography. What makes us pick up a camera and press that shutter button to freeze a specific moment in time. Now many people would say that that has to be some deep-rooted decision and where you have to have an emotional connection with the subject or whatever it might be. But sometimes it doesn't have to be as deep as that. It could be simply that the light was favourable on a specific subject that caught your eye. It could be the subject matter itself, that it's in a certain position that works well with the background and you think, wow, that composition is going to be absolutely fantastic. So therefore that is the decision that I'm making to pick up the camera and make that photograph at that specific moment in time. So don't necessarily think that a why decision has to be really deep. I think it is a very personal thing because we all take photographs of different things and different things spark our imagination, but it doesn't necessarily have to have an emotional connection every time, although don't let that put you off taking photographs that you are emotionally connected to because that can also work extremely well. of the crowds at Ranadale, we headed to the much more peaceful banks of Crummock Water, where the sun was still shining but we seemed to have the place a bit more to ourselves, which was much more favourable in terms of the beautiful landscape photographs that we were aiming to achieve whilst we were there. As we wandered along the banks, sometimes the odd person would pass in a kayak, but for the majority of the time it was beautiful, peaceful and absolutely idyllic. It was time to move on to our next area of decision making when it comes to making photographs. And for the next port of call we decided to go with camera settings. Now camera settings can be one of those difficult decisions to make, especially when you're first starting out in photography, because it can be quite technical and complex and you have to have some kind of background knowledge of how your camera works to be able to make those decisions in the first place. If you'd like to learn more about manual photography and camera settings, then check out my series, my mini-series that I did during lockdown a couple of years ago, which explains in three steps the process of making photographs manually. If you've watched that already, or you know your stuff, 
then continue watching and we'll discuss in a bit more detail how we can make better decisions when it comes to setting our camera. When it comes to making decisions about camera settings for my personal photographs, what I tend to try and do is work out exactly what I need from that photograph. Do I need a depth of field? Do I need to capture some kind of movement? Or do I want to create a slow shutter speed shot like I was doing at St Bees on the Friday evening of the weekend? And by making that initial decision, we can start to play around with different settings in the camera. So if I would like to have a shallow depth of field, then I know that I'm going to have to open my aperture wider. If I want to capture movement in terms of slowing the shutter speed down, then I'm obviously going to have to slow that shutter speed down and maybe close my aperture down so I can get more light over a longer period of time rather than less light over a shorter period of time. So often the decision making when it comes to camera settings comes from the subject that we're photographing. Is it light? Is it dark? And then secondly, what effect do I want to achieve from this photograph? Whether that's depth of field, movement or whatever it might be. Once we come to those conclusions, then our photograph tends to work a lot better because we've put more work into deciding exactly how we want that photograph to turn out when we get to that stage of sharing it with the world or maybe keeping it to ourselves and just enjoying it to ourselves. Between visiting Crummet Water and going out for our evening social, which is a favourite part of any photo walk weekend, we had a bit of time to kill and some lovely golden hour light to photograph. So we headed to Ennerdale, which is an absolutely spectacular valley on the western side of the Lake District, and the vast expanse of Ennerdale water opened up in front of us as we wandered through the woods. We took a few shots here, including some of the dam with the water trickling down and the surrounding fells around the lake, and then went for a beautiful meal at the local pub, which, as I say, was much needed after a busy day of photo walking.
second full day of the Lake District photo walk weekend we woke up to a bit more cloud cover and I must admit we were thinking well hopefully this will put some of the crowds off that we encountered at Rannadale the day before. Today our aim was to head to the iconic Wast Water again in the Western Lakes to capture the dramatic landscapes of Wast Water itself and also Wasdale Head which is a spectacular culmination of some of the largest and tallest fells in the Lake District including the beast of them all, Scorfell Pike. Battling with some quite gusty conditions we headed up to this promontory overlooking the, the lake itself which in times gone by has been voted Britain's favourite view by whom and why I'm not quite sure but it was absolutely spectacular. It was here where we started to discuss the next decision making process which was composition. Now composition is a technical aspect of photography but also a very visual and creative aspect as well and because it draws on both of those sides we have to take into account many different things when we're composing a photograph. Usually my recommendation is starting off with a subject whether that is a specific subject like an island on the lake or a canoeist or something that was there when we were there or whether it's some kind of vanishing point like a wiggling winding road or a track leading you off into the distance. Once you've found that focal point or vanishing point then you can start to make decisions about things that go on around it making sure that you keep the background nice and simple so it doesn't draw attention away from that focal point making sure that the things that you put around that focal point provide context to the scene and don't draw people's eye off in various different directions and maybe using some kind of a lead whether that's a line of a fence or a track or whatever it might be or what I like to call visual stepping stones so maybe that's physical stones within the landscape drawing your eye into the perspective or as we found in the Lake District the Herdwick sheep which can provide perfect visual stepping stones into any photograph. gusty breeze was it was blowing the clouds through quite readily so by the time we'd made our way to Wasdale Head it was quite warm and sunny just like it was the day before. Although the car parks were busy the lower path seemed to be quite quiet which was good from our perspective getting those beautiful landscape shots around this spectacular part of the Lake District. We wandered down to the lake head itself before wandering along a track deeper into the fells. Underneath some of the tallest fells in the Lake District it almost felt quite cosy. As we walked past the smallest church in England and meandered our way through farmland underneath these humongous fells in lovely lighting conditions it made us sad that the weekend was coming to its conclusion. But it also made me look back at the decisions that I'd been making whilst making the photographs that I had been doing over the last few days. When it comes to why I make photographs I suppose it depends on what sort of location I'm in. When I'm in a landscape setting I often look for simple subjects with simple backgrounds and subtle lighting. And when I'm in a more urban setting maybe then I'm looking for those pockets of quiet because 
I don't tend to like crowds and busy places. So if I can find a quiet corner which suits me, then I'm obviously more connected to that place and that situation. So that will tempt me to pick up a camera and make a photograph, especially if the light's right. When it comes to camera settings, then I will often choose to set my aperture first and let my shutter speed and ISO be a balancing factor in getting the correct exposure. The reason for that is I tend to like making photographs with quite shallow depths of field because I feel not only does it simplify the scene a bit, it also gives that nice soft rounded edge to the background of a photograph without it being in your face all the time. But I realise that that is very much a personal decision on my part. Sometimes if I'm going out after dark, like at St Bees, or if I'm trying to photograph waterfalls using a slow shutter speed, then I'll go with the shutter speed first and let the aperture and ISO control the rest of the exposure. When it comes to composition, then for me simplicity is the main thing that I look for. I don't tend to like busy photographs with lots going on. I like to pare things right down to the basics and maybe use a decent amount of negative space because I often find that not only will that help you to make your subject matter stand out, it will also give room to contemplate within the frame rather than being rushed to look at loads of different things. I don't tend to make photographs based on rules like the rule of thirds or leading lines. I try and formulate a photograph around depth, so trying to make the perspective stand out so it looks like we could even walk into the frame. So using foreground, midground and background elements can work really well for that and maybe sometimes a vanishing point to suck people's eye through the perspective of a photograph. And it tends to be those decisions that I make when it comes to creating compositions. As I've said, decision making when it comes to taking photographs is a very personal thing and I know that you have to have some kind of background knowledge about photography before we can even make these decisions in the first place. But I think when you are learning about photography, bringing those often subconscious decisions to the conscious mind can really help us to ground ourselves as photographers and understand what we want to achieve from every single photograph that we make. As we get better and more accomplished as photographers, then it's then that we can start to push those decisions into the subconscious mind because we are just getting into that routine. What I'd like to stress at this point is that there are no concrete right or wrong decisions that all photographers can make to get that perfect photograph. It comes down to your own personal decisions as an individual photographer. Because ultimately, it's the decisions that we make that make our own photographs unique to us. It is then when we can utilise our camera settings and composition decisions to influence the reason why we've picked up a camera in the first place, however trivial that decision may ultimately be. When it comes to making photographs, I think it's useful to bring these decisions to mind when we are starting out in photography, because not only will it help us to gain confidence, it will also give our photographs meaning to the people that look at them. Somebody may question, why have you done that? Why have you done this? And if you've made those decisions before you've clicked that shutter button, then you'll be able to provide them with those answers, which adds much more gravitas to the photographs that you make as a photographer.
brief visit to the Lake District has tempted you to get out and about with your camera and start making decisions for yourself, then check out YorkshirePhotoWalks.com for our latest schedule of photo walks and photo walk weekends, of which we've got more co coming up on the schedule very soon. You can also check out Yorkshire Photo Walks on social media, at Photo Walks Yorks on Instagram and Facebook, for all of our latest photo walk photographs and latest news as well. If you have enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up, it helps me to share the channel with more and more people who like to improve their photography skills. And if you'd like to comment on anything that you've seen in this video or anything that I've said and share your decisions that you make when you make photographs then please share them with us in the comment section below. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Keep making good decisions when you go out with your camera and if you're making individual photographs for yourself then you shouldn't go wrong. See you soon.